Section six of the National Geographic Magazine, Volume five. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. The Natural Bridge of Virginia by Charles D. Walcott. The Natural Bridge of Virginia is one of those striking geographic features of America which, like Niagara Falls and many other natural features, will in time disappear under the action of the agencies of erosion. The same forces that create it will ultimately destroy them. In the case of Niagara, the rate of wear of the platform over which the water rushes has been measured and the rate of retreat of the falls of the stream is known. Natural Bridge is slowly but surely wearing away, and it appears to be desirable to record by photographs and notes the present condition of the bridge as a means of determining in the future the changes that occur from time to time. For this purpose a set of photographs, with notes taken in 1891, have been placed in the Library of the United States Geological Survey. The present article includes a few observations on the origin and the present condition of the bridge. The accompanying view, forming plate 21, is one looking northward through the arch, and it accurately represents the condition of the bridge and canyon at the time it was taken. It may be that a more detailed description, with a full series of views, will be published in the future. During the field season of 1891, I studied the rocks exposed along the channel of Cedar Creek, a small tributary of the James River in Rockbridge County, Virginia. The first struggle of that has been short distance above, they are rising westward and dipping eastward toward the bridge at an angle of 5 degrees to 10 degrees. This increases to 20 degrees to 25 degrees higher up the stream. A diagrammatic section of the rocks cut through in the canyon of Cedar Creek gives the outline shown in figure 1. The bridge is at A, Lace Falls at B, and James River at C. No attempt is made to show the depth of the canyon or gorge through which Cedar Creek flows. It is not supposed that the present Cedar Creek began to wear its channel across the edges of the upturned beds from B to C when the present topographic features were established. On the contrary, it began its work long before, under conditions and in rocks that have since disappeared in the general erosion of the surrounding country. The course of the stream was determined by circumstances connected with the life history of James River. When the latter obtained a new lease of active life, and lowered its channel through the Blue Ridge, Cedar Creek began to cut down its bed in the Peneplain and to prepare the way for the possibility of the existence of an arch over its channel. The general mode of formation has long been described for this and other natural rock bridges. In this case, in detail, it is considered to be as follows. Cedar Creek was engaged for a considerable period in excavating the gorge from the James River to a point not far below the present site of the bridge, where a fall appears to have existed, the summit of which was not far, if at all, below the present level of the top of the bridge. About this time the water found a subterranean passage in the limestone further up the stream than the present site of the bridge, and through this it flowed and discharged beneath the brink of the falls. The passage generally enlarged until all the waters of the creek passed through it, and the bridge began its existence. What the length of this subterranean passage was is a matter of conjecture. It may have been one hundred or several hundred feet. All of its roof has disappeared except the narrow span of the bridge, and the abutting walls have been worn back by erosion until the gorge or canyon is much wider than at the bridge. The bridge is massive and strong, and the supporting walls rise in solid, almost unbroken, mural faces to the spring of the arch, nearly two hundred feet above the bed of Cedar Creek, as clearly shown in the accompanying plate, which is reproduced mechanically from a photograph taken by the author. The position of the massive layers of limestone at the center of the low synclinal gives them power to resist erosion to a much greater extent than the upturned strata above and below the bridge. The condition of the latter favors rapid disintegration, and the result is shown in the widening of the gorge. 
the retreating lower level of the stream is now at Lace Falls, nearly a mile above the bridge. The gorge below the bridge widens out more rapidly, owing partly to the erosion caused by a small brook that enters from the north, partly to the greater period of erosion to which it has been subjected. On the northern side, opposite Pulpit Rock, about twenty feet west of the public road, the summit of the bridge is 236 feet above the water, and this part of the arch has a thickness of 44 feet and a span of from 45 to 60 feet. The western edge is about 10 feet higher, and the eastern edge about 10 feet lower than the central point. The massive layers of limestone forming the bridge are gradually wearing away on the outer edges from the action of water and frost. If water breaks were arranged so that the water could not flow in upon the bridge, and about it from the southwestern side, and if a shed with watertight roof were built over the arch, disintegration and destruction would be indefinitely postponed. As it is, it will be many centuries before the natural processes of erosion now at work upon and within the arch will completely break it down. Since the proceeding was written, an article has appeared in the New York Tribune of May 15, 1893, in which an account is given of the discovery of a passage to the United States near the seen it in the light of hundreds of candles shows at the entrance a room about twenty feet by ten with a ceiling sixty feet in height then a low arched doorway into a room narrower than the former and extending forty or fifty feet up a steep flight of steps the arches here are from fifteen to twenty feet in height and their color a liquid blue there are a few stalactites from the ceiling and many crystal forms on the wall turning here from a direct course through another arched doorway, beautifully decorated, about six feet in height, there is a round room, twenty feet in diameter and perhaps fifty feet from pit to dome. Out of the side of this springs a stone cascade, perfect as any waterfall, transparent at the lower edge, about ten feet in length and eight in breadth. As the light is thrown upon this, it has all the appearance of a living waterfall. A passage under this, over a bridge, leads to a labyrinth barely wide enough for one to pass. The arch is about fifteen feet in height, and the walls glisten like polished marble. These windings extend about thirty feet, and open into a well-shaped room, not at any point more fifteen feet in diameter, and opening, about thirty feet above, to the sky. From the description it is evident that the passage was worn by percolating waters that found their way from the plain above to the base level cut by the stream below, along some previously existing crevices. This process of erosion may be seen at the underground river between Natural Bridge and Lace Falls, where a strong current of water flows through a channel in the limestone that is about ten feet above the level of Cedar Creek and only exposed to view for a few feet of its length. All of the phenomena observed at Natural Bridge and in the canyon of Cedar Creek are repeated in many limestone regions. Sometimes they give rise to underground caverns, as at Mammoth Cave, and more rarely to canyons and natural bridges. The illustration at the Natural Bridge is one of the finest known, and worthy of study by anyone interested in geologic phenomena or the beauty in nature. End of Section 6